Hello, welcome to Severin Church.
go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for your blessings each and every day of our life. And God, how you just love us so much. And we do have that whispering hope in our life. Thank you, Father, that you bring us joy when we're sad. You heal us when we're sick. And you comfort us when we're at loss. And God, we pray now for those who are sick, that you will be with them. And now, congregation, if there's someone you would like to lift up in prayer this morning, would you please speak their first name? Thank you, Father, that you hear our prayers. And now let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible said there's a book. And it's got your name written in it. And they'll say, tell me who you are. I'll say, my name is Pastor Bill West. West, let me look. (laughs) Oh my goodness, yes, yes. I know who you are. Come on in. Look and see what I have prepared for you. My fear is there's going to be a lot of religious people that are going to be standing there. They'll say, my name is Dr. John Doe. Let me check. Hmm. Hmm. I'm sorry, we don't have a Mr. John Doe. I don't know who you are. You need to depart from here. But you remember me. I attended church every Sunday. I was a good person most of the time. Will you check again? I'll check again. Sorry, you got to go. Wow. Nicodemus was missing the very part of salvation, and that was accepting Jesus as the Messiah and Lord into his heart. When I, when I talk to someone about the Lord, I get them to pray the sinner's prayer with me. God, come into my heart. I know that you are Christ, the Son of the living God. Forgive me of my sins. I want to be your child forever. And the Bible says that Jesus is faithful to come in to our lives. And we are in the palm of His hand forever and forever. Isn't that good? But, but what if I sin? You are in the palm of His hand forever and forever. But what if I do bad things? You're in His hand forever and forever. So what other church terms do we use? And we do have to be careful when we speak to people about the things of God because they may not understand. You take somebody who had never been to church before, never understood the gospel, and if you told them they had to be born again, they probably would have the same response, wouldn't they? So you have to break it down a little bit different. Now we hear these terms, justification. How many of you heard that term before? That means not guilty. When you stand before the Lord and Satan says, yeah, but he's got a pile of sins, Jesus said, I paid for that on the cross. I justified him. Y'all ain't happy this morning. I, 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 I'm, trying to, I'm trying to help you today. Justified. I justified him with my blood. We use the word sanctification. That's a good church word. That means the process of being freed from sin. We are sanctified. We are free from our sin. Because of Jesus Christ and His blood. If you walk away from here this morning and you don't understand how to get saved, then you're, you need to turn your hearing aid up, all right? Because I'm breaking it down for you this morning what John chapter 3 said. Being born again, becoming part of the family of God. If you're a brother in Christ, you're a Christian, and you are my brother in Christ. You are my sister in Christ. We are a family because God is our Father Righteousness, that's a good term. That means being perfect. Guess what? Ain't none of us at. (laughs) But that's what's required to get to heaven. But Jesus will say, because of my blood, they are pure, Lord, and their name is in the book. Mercy and grace. Don't we say that a lot? Thank you for your mercy and thank you for your grace. Mercy is deliverance from judgment. Amen. We don't have to stand before, their, before the Lord to determine if we're saved or not. Because of His mercy and grace, 
is extending kindness to the unworthy. Kindness to the unworthy. And then the Lord tells Nicodemus, as Moses lifted the serpent up in the wilderness, so you must look upon the cross to be saved. Go to Numbers 21 with me, if you would, this morning. Numbers chapter 21, first part of the Bible. Numbers chapter 21. Numbers 21, verses 4 through 9. Just to give you a little background, the children of Israel are wandering through the desert, right? How many years did they wander through the desert? Forty years. God had just given them a great victory. And look how they respond back to God. God was feeding them every day. They would wake up in the morning and the bread from heaven, which was called manna, would be on the ground. They would pick it up and they would cook it. They would make bread and things out of it. They didn't have to walk away from their camp. When they got up in the morning, it was there. Sort of like having breakfast in bed. You open your eyes and your food's there. God was taking care of them. And look what they said. They traveled. This is Numbers 21, verse 4. They traveled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way, and they spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the desert? There is no bread, there is no water, and we detest this miserable food. That's the food God was providing for them every day. Boy, I don't think it made the Lord happy because in verse 6... Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. Ain't nobody here likes a venomous snake. I can't tell a venomous from a non-venomous. So I grab my hoe and I, he's a dead snake. <laughs> Unless they're black, they're black snakes, I let them go, or green snakes. But if I don't know what they are, anyway. They sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people and many Israelites died. And the people came to Moses and said, we've sinned. When we spoke against the Lord and against you, pray that the Lord will take the snakes away. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, make a snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake, they looked at the bronze snake and they lived. You see how this points to Christ? As the snakes were biting the people, Moses held the rod up with the snake, the bronze snake on the top. And anybody who had bitten would look at it and they would live. And Jesus said in John chapter 3, unless you look upon the cross of Jesus Christ, like the people did with Moses, you cannot be saved. There is no salvation apart from the cross of Jesus Christ. People will tell you there are many paths to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Boy, that's one way, isn't it? But Jesus is revealing to Nicodemus his true purpose. And we all know John 3.16, don't we? Let's say it together. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That summed it up, didn't it? It was good for them and it's good for us today. People like to try to make it more complicated than what it is. They want to add a whole bunch of things on there. You have to come to church all the time. You got to give tenth. You got to do this. 
Jesus said, believe in me and you will be saved. I've led a lot of people to the Lord on their deathbed. And they pray that simple prayer, God, come into my heart. And Jesus said, you will be saved. Several years ago, there was a 14-year-old girl. Her name was Laura. And while she was on a cruise ship with her family off the Baja coast, her appendix ruptured. The ship sent out a distress signal because they knew she needed to have surgery right away. The sailors from the USS Ronald Reagan were 250 miles away. They were in a training, um, they were in a training thing. But they pulled anchor, they did every, and turned the ship around and steamed all through the night. And when they got close enough, they sent the helicopters and landed on top of the, the cruise ship, took the little 14-year-old girl back to the Reagan where the doctors operated on her and saved her life. The cost of that was $2.5 million. But guess what? They didn't bill the parents. Because the, the U.S. government decided that it was worth it to save this little girl's life. That's a lot of money. But guess what? Jesus paid a lot more for you and for me. He gave his life so that we might have eternal life. I'm going to challenge you today. If you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to be giving the invitation here in just a minute, and I'll be standing here at the front. You've heard the gospel today. Hopefully it came across loud and clear that if you want to be saved, then you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and that is the only way. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, thank you for the scriptures today. How clear it is, Lord, of how much you loved us. Now I pray, God, if there's someone here today that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that they might come during the invitation time. In Jesus' name, amen. Severin Church now offers the availability of giving online. Go to our website, severinchurch.faith, and click on the Give Online tab. Next, click on the Give Online button, and you will be redirected to the secure online giving site. Once there, you can log in or look for the first time link to the left of the page, then create a secure account with your own private login information. Thank you for your generosity.